Good evening and thanks for joining us. Thunder Bay Fire Rescue spent much of the night battling a blaze that began around 7 o'clock. Crews are still on scene, but the fire is now under control. Fire pumpers and an aerial unit originally responded to the blaze on the 2400 block of Dawson Road. The aerial ladder was called off and later a tanker was brought in to supply the area with water. Crews say the blaze began in the basement, but flames spread quickly and could be seen billowing out of a roof. An inspector is now on scene and officials tell us that the home is a complete loss. At least one homeowner arrived to the scene after the blaze began. And there were no reported injuries. Thunder Bay police were brought in to help control traffic along Dawson Road while crews worked. We'll have more details as information becomes available. Well, new streets, homes, townhouses and apartments. They're all part of a new subdivision being proposed for the city. The development known as Stage 4 of the Dawson Heights subdivision would be built on the western end of Wardrobe Avenue. An application, which has already raised some concern, will come before City Council tomorrow night. The subdivision would include 15 lots for single detached homes, 20 townhouses and five sixplexes. Two new roads are also being proposed. The developer has already constructed stages 1 and 2 of the subdivision and stage 3 work is underway. Still, neighbours in the area have written the city expressing concern over the multiple dwelling units. City planners are recommending the application be approved. No price tag for the development is given, but the project is expected to begin in the near future. Officials at Thunder Bay Regional say their crackdown on smoking of smoking on hospital property is working. The enforcement of the decade-old smoking rule began in September 20th. Two months later, no tickets have been issued yet. Hospital officials wouldn't allow our cameras to shoot a video of anyone disobeying the smoking ban, but people have been spotted lighting up in very public areas, including at the entrance to the emergency department. Fresh cigarette butts are also visible on hospital grounds. Executive Vice President uh, Dr. Mark Henderson says despite that, he thinks smokers are getting the message. For all, it's been very successful. It's uh, if you walk around the hospital or just walking in and out to your car, you can see that uh, there are far few people smoking. In fact, you don't really see them smoking at all. I um, mean, you will see people uh, leaving the property, which of course they're entitled to do, to smoke. Uh, but there's clearly been a major difference since September the 30th. Under the terms of the ban, people aren't allowed to smoke anywhere on the hospital grounds, even in their cars. People can walk to Golf Links Road or Oliver Road to light up, but patients with IVs aren't allowed to leave the hospital. Henderson says he's had good feedback from smokers whenever he's approached them about the crackdown. No, uh, we've certainly warned people, but most of the uh, people we see are very reasonable. Uh, we do do regular walk-arounds at the grounds, and I myself have done them. And if we find somebody smoking, and uh, I've usually just said, do you, do you know this is a non-smoking non area now? And they're usually very polite, and they put the cigarette out right away, and, and we just have a chat about health and smoking and in general. Well, whenever the first charge is laid against a smoker on hospital property, the fine could cost up to $200. Now that Thunder Bay's new courthouse building is nearly complete, another massive construction project is starting to take shape on the city's south side. The $83 million Center of Excellence for Integrated Senior Services is being built on Lily Street. St. Joseph's Care Group is creating the 416 new long-term care spaces to replace beds at three outdated senior homes. Jonathan Wilson reports. Work crews with Bondfield Construction will be busy throughout the winter, building the outer shell for this seven-story senior's home known as the Cease. St. Joseph's Care Group CEO Tracy Buckler attended the groundbreaking ceremony here in May. It's a two-year construction project, and she admits it's been a long time coming to see this big project take shape. Um, in fact, it was 2007 when then-Minister George Smitherman made the announcement of the Centre of Excellence for Integrated Senior Services, and so it has taken quite a number of years to get to this point and uh, it, it's on time, it's on schedule, on budget uh, for the construction schedule. This is phase two of the CEASE project. Phase one saw the construction of the sister Lila Greco supportive housing complex next door. Those 132 apartment units cost $22 million to build. This building will cost $83 million and will contain 416 long-term care beds. Another 32 long-term beds will eventually be added on to Hogarth Riverview Manor as part of the overall CEASE project. The addition will replace Grandview Lodge, Bethany Nursing Home and Dawson Court. So that's uh, 410 residents that live in uh, those three homes right now and then an additional 38 beds 
will be added to the system, which are certainly uh, well needed at yeah. this point in time. Grandview Lodge and Dawson Court are both more than 50 years old. The seniors living at Grandview have no doubt been watching these tall elevator shafts go up just down the road on Lily Street. Buckler says some are excited for the move, but there's some trepidation as well. The, the homes where the residents live right now are their homes and they really love where they are for the most part. And so I think it's exciting on one sense to be moving into a new building, but it's also a bit stressful when people have lived in their home that they're accustomed to, whether it's Bethany Nursing Home, Grandview Lodge or Dawson Court for a number of years, then uh, it can be a very stressful time for seniors to have to relocate as well. For those hundreds of seniors who do move in here sometime in 2015, the change of scenery will no doubt be like comparing night and day. You know what, a new build is always um, up to date. It's modern, um, it has uh, washroom facilities, eating uh, areas, lots of activity space, things like that that are not always available in older buildings. So a new building is, uh, is pretty exciting and it's, uh, pretty, it's gonna be a very nice place. Jonathan Wilson, TBT News. Ontario Energy Minister Bob Chiarelli says consumers can expect to see their electricity bills jump more than 30% in the next three years. For our question of the day, we wanted to know if you thought that that number was reasonable. That's going to be hard on people who uh, are on lower incomes to uh, have essential services like lighting and those kind of things you just take for granted. No, it's not reasonable. I mean, people are having difficulty paying for electricity rates now. So another 30%, and especially getting the news in the winter time, it's not good. Uh, no, unreasonable. It's, uh, we're paying too much now for hydro rates. Um, it's just a, way too much. We should be uh, paying a lot less. We're paying every time hydro does something. We pay for all the work. And if you look at your hydro bill, how much is uh, actually hydro and how much is for the services and everything delivered and... No, I think it's gone up enough. Uh, that's kind of... I find it kind of ridiculous. It's, that's a huge hike. Yeah. We face a lot as it is. What we need is some intelligent politicians and some good government. We don't have that. We're, we're being ripped off and they're spending money where they shouldn't be spending money. Yeah, no. Ah, uh, yeah, it is. And why is that? Everything's got to go up once in a while. Well, it's a tradition in Thunder Bay where thousands of residents line city streets. If you look behind me, that's what makes it so special. The trucks, um, it, it's, a, it's phenomenal every year what, what the, the effort that they put in. And I've been out driving around and there's people lined up already, even though the weather's cold and it's going to be a great night. And Saturday definitely was a great night. Nearly 60 vehicles rolled out, donning bright displays for the 15th annual Parade of Light. Stevenson adds this is such a successful event because of the dedicated participants putting in countless hours to create these masterpieces. Many of those taking part in the Parade of Lights come back every year. Now every year uh, Union Gas puts something in. We have T-Bay Tell's got something. We have... Uh, different every year we have the same organizations that step up and then we always have a mixture of new ones that want to get involved so it, it's you know some some do it every year some are every second year type thing and it's a lot of work so if, if you have to have a big volunteer base sometimes you can do it sometimes you can't four charities benefit from the parade of lights autism thunder bay the therapeutic riding association special olympics and the george jeffrey children's center well, the first week of December has come and gone, and it's finally beginning to look a lot like winter on area ski hills. With the help of some artificial snow, Mount Baldy has now opened their slopes. Mike Albanese stopped by. He has more in this report. Well, it's official. Thunder Bay has opened their hills to the public for a new season of skiing and snowboarding. Mount Baldy officially opened Saturday and has since seen over 100 people strap up and hit the slopes. You don't have to be into snow sports to enjoy Baldy, though, as owner Craig Spies says it's versatile in that sense. If you're not a skier and you bring your family out, like the, the, the way the, the hill works, the hill bottlenecks, and you can actually sit in the building anywhere and watch your, your child or your husband or wife come down the hill and, and you'll, you'll eventually you'll see them. You know, they'll eventually get to the bottom here and you can, you can see from all the, 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 either the bar or down below. 
you know, it's a, and it's just a very, a lot of families here. It's a, it's a real family fun oriented place. From what I saw today though, everyone who came out didn't come to watch. They came to get some runs in, and apparently that's the trend this year. Due to the weather, Baldy has been able to get a great base of artificial snow on the hill, which is good, seeing as they're ready for a high attendance rate this year. The memberships are really up this year, so um, we're looking for a really good season, and we've changed our hours a bit. Saturdays were open all day. We call them Super Saturdays. We're open from 10 in the morning right till 9 at night, so right through. So it'll be a great place to come and spend the whole day. Now, I won't lie to you, I thought no one would come out today because it was so cold. But Baldy and its loyal boarders proved me wrong as everyone from parents to kids came bundled and ready to ride. It looks like nothing can stop the love for these winter sports. I just love it so much. Uh, I'd probably snowboard every day if I could. So that's probably why I came out today. Now that all the ski hills are open in Thunder Bay, there's no excuse for you not to grab those skis and snowboards and hit the slopes. Except for this minus 25 weather, that could be a deterrent. Knowing Thunder Bay, though, we have at least eight more months of winter left. Temperatures are sure to fluctuate during that. Mike Albanese, 